Romance manga, or manga including romance as a significant subgenre, has always been difficult for me to consume. I'm not inherently avoidant of reading romance manga, but rather incredibly picky, contemplative of overused stereotypes and the significance a main couple's dynamic has towards betraying relationships in a healthy manner. But as time passes, the connection to school romance withers and drifts away, the relatability of adult romance gravitating to my interests much more. Whilst I struggle to read through, or have reservations in recommending some school romance manga, there have been occasional hidden gems that surprise me. Ultimately, my key factors towards enjoying romance manga is exploring kindness and understanding, presenting conventional tropes, not reliant on unnecessary miscommunication for drama or intrigue, but rather, written with emotional maturity that doesn't normalise toxic behaviour exploring different relationships outside of perceived normality, and earnestly developing a main couple outside of their relationship. Whilst there's other romance manga I'd love to discuss on the channel, Skip and Loafer takes precedence as a heartwarming surprise worth exploring. It's attentive towards the development of a wholesome romance, but more appealing in its cast, a collection of characters who differ in personal growth as influenced by the good of others. Skip and Loafer starts with Mitsumi moving from the Ishikawa prefecture to Tokyo. Mangaka Misaki Takamatsu cleverly plays on this country girl to city girl trope, often found in manga, because it's not just a trope, but a saddening reality. Mitsumi moves to Tokyo to study and build a career in the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications to provide monetary solutions for Ikejima, Mitsumi's hometown suffering depopulation issues. Takamatsu writes a main character who recognises the negative effects relocating has on quaint rural districts, affected by younger generations seeking the benefits of city living and leaving their countryside environments. It's an unorthodox goal for a main character, especially for a seinen manga, but heartwarming in its approach. To show a persistent drive for an action so humanitarian and benevolent, She's easily the highlight of the manga, charismatic in her open nature with a strive to help those in need. And though she can be overconfident in her actions, it's endearingly so, not seeking achievement through putting others down, but as a step closer to reaching her goal. There's an innocence in watching her experience city life for the first time, performing karaoke far too enthusiastically, becoming acquainted with her first phone, or drinking a new flavoured bubble tea. Humorously enough, being compared to a baby duck taking its first swim is amusingly accurate, but Mitsumi is still human, and has a tendency to put pressure on herself to perform well. But in pure Mitsumi style, it often leads to entertaining mishaps, like becoming lost and turning up late on her first school day, to throwing up on her home teacher, or completely messing up her class introduction. These innocent errors showcase the genuinity of her personality, Mistakes are what make people human, show flaws and imperfections that make everyone individual. Mitsumi knows she trips and fails. Applying pressure to oneself in achieving perfect results will eventually lead to such. However, my favourite trait of hers is the persevering strength to pick herself back up and learn from her mistakes. Mitsumi always has support no matter where she goes, whether back home in the countryside of Ikejima or the busy street life of Tokyo, because she treats people kindly and sincerely, and in return, is offered support during times of hardship, with a reminder that pass or fail, rewards are deserving to those who try despite the challenges. Majority of my reservations towards romance manga is the glorification of toxic behaviour. Romanticism of abuse is forgotten in the name of love where problematic actions are, for the majority, perpetuated by the male lead. Over time, these unhealthy power dynamics have significantly died down, and healthier relationships are more common. As of this, we're seeing male leads who are more respectable and kind in nature, Shima Sosuke being a shining example. Opposing Mitsumi's ideals, Shima has a laid-back indifference to life, with no prospect of a future goal, nor an incentive to attend school if woken up late. Therefore, it only seems fitting, seeing two characters so polarising in nature quickly connect with an adorable chemistry. Despite Shima's nonchalant and carefree ways of approach, and the stereotypical popular schoolboy persona, he is indisputably kind and selfless, 
I'm supposed to be the guy who says yes to everything, perfectly summarises the nature of his upbringing, and the impact on his decision making and conscious behaviour with others. Shima is a people pleaser to the core. Approaching the world of acting at a young age with the incentive of distracting his upset mother, Shima grew up with altruistic principles. He puts other people's needs first, neglecting his own wants with the pressure of expectation ever persistent. Thus creating this outwardly laid-back persona, the forefront of a boy who never considers pursuing activities for his own enjoyment. But, whether through being attentive of his mother's emotions, or acting developing his awareness of reading people's feelings, Shima is incredibly observant of others. Even Mitsumi and Shima's first interaction was initiated through Shima's kind offering of help with a layer of concern, noticing a secluded and worryingly stressed individual wearing the same uniform as himself. His caring attributes come in waves of unconscious subtlety, many actions done naturally because being kind is within his identity, acts often done instinctively without thoughts of repayment or gratitude, to the point where purposely giving Mitsumi a gift makes him worried she'll get the wrong idea, because he always has others' thoughts in mind before his own. His affectionate behaviour regarding Mitsumi is repetitive throughout the series, like noticing she's tired when no one else does, or offering to help Mitsumi when completing after-school activities alone, to being thoughtful of Mitsumi's excited rambles she worries are boring, listening without reservation and considerate of her enthusiasm. It's irrefutable to deny Shima values time around Mitsumi, and cares more than he realises. His kind actions aren't a consequence of an unrealised crush, he's kind to everyone, and that is what makes him livable to me, and a standout main character in a romance manga. Shima's attachment to Mitsumi is through admiration, for her determination in achieving her goals, no matter the setbacks or how others may perceive her. She's constantly on the move and wanting to better herself every day. Shima was denied dreaming of goals since childhood, sacrificing his future for the requirements of others, but it's Mitsumi who inspires him to change, to pursue acting, not to please others, but for his own enjoyment. From starting the manga with no interest in school, to developing a love in attending, and finding motivation towards acting of his own choice, shows the strength in surrounding yourself with people who care, and how vital Mitsumi was towards inspiring ambition. To put it as bluntly as Shima can be with his own words, Mitsumi and Shima are the most genuine school romance I've read in a while. Takamatsu has a subliminal insight and understanding of how high schoolers behave, a genuine grasp on how teenagers act and talk around another that doesn't feel forced or artificial. The friends to lovers pathway isn't new to manga, but in Skip and Loafer, where friendship is so integral to the story, Mitsumi and Shima's progression from friends to maybe more feels very natural. The story mostly follows from Mitsumi's perspective, seeing her get closer to Shima and realising her feelings whilst trying to pursue her goal simultaneously. Even so, there's a clear mutual interest and respect for each other besides Mitsumi's assumed one-sided romantic feelings. Shima readily befriends Mitsumi, someone who connects with him easily despite their differing morals, and looks to build a friendship without fear of ulterior dating motives. And Mitsumi does clearly develop feelings for him later, yet her interactions with him are authentic, not initiated through purely selfish reasons, but because he listens and acknowledges her goals without disregard, not allowing Mitsumi to brush her dreams off as laughable, but as something admirable and commendable. Her feelings develop naturally without imposing on their friendship, but supplement from the foundation of it. It's what allows for a relationship to bounce off another in compassionate displays, whether protecting another forthwith, or beckoning ardent glee through comical resemblances. Shima always finds tangible amusement adjacent to Mitsumi's personality, encompassing this blooming relationship in a layer of softness, leaving readers powerless to the effects of its charm. This hostilic approach, imparting affectionate measures through their dynamic, beckons a beautified vision of how healthy relationships should be explored, not enticed through melodramatics, nor a saviour narrative, but a motive in pulling at the heartstrings, supporting another through pass or fail, and a relationship not solely dependent on chemistry, but derived through pragmatic influence outside infatuation. Yet, exclusively endorsing Mitsumi and Shima's characters would be neglecting the supporting cast, 
a diversity of teenagers etched with all shades of humanity, with dithering imperfections and qualities furthering the story's authenticity. My favourite character within the manga is a popular schoolgoer recognised for her beauty. On a surface level, the description of Yuzuki's character is comparable to Shima. Both blonde, have countless admirers, and uphold a facade withstanding the pressures of expectation whilst maintaining a smile. Shima faces his own encounters of fake friendships, girls seeking the attention from the school's pretty boy or using Mitsumi to get closer to him. However, the portrayal of that similar issue regarding Yuzuki is much more cutthroat in a layering of misogyny and internalised bigotry. Yuzuki bears the brunt of unwanted proposals from boys continuously. Her good looks are seen as a warrant for baseless advances or disingenuous actions to gain exclusive time with her. Dealing with multiple inappropriate precipitants, Yuzuki's sexist ordeals with boys and the aftermath of girls' jealousy and vitriol had taken a toll towards her sociability. Her personality isn't cold nor deflective, despite circumstances that leave so many as such, but shy and reserved to those unknown. And it's through befriending Mitsumi, a girl who brings a change of scenery and circumstances during a get-together, of which Yuzuki attends with a cautionary step and a lack of enthusiasm, that allows readers to see her open up more. Mitsumi's influence of Yuzuki's character encapsulates the joy within positive female friendships, and is an effective deconstruction towards the tropes Yuzuki's character type normally entails. Belonging to a friend group finally lacking judgement or jealousy, she no longer needs to fit in with others, instead accompanied by those who love her as she is. Another element I value is the lack of a predetermined male love interest thrown her way. A popular occurrence in romance manga, wherein, if there's an equal amount of boys as with girls in the cast, it's predictable in telling their romantic paths. Instead, opposing the stereotypical narrative direction a character like Yuzuki would follow, Skip and Lofa delights in the importance of female companionship just as much. Showcasing a girl who presented an outward popularity overshadowed by the reality of loneliness, ultimately finding her people. Takamatsu shows her first idealism of friendship not fabricated through deceit, but through bonding with those who would be deemed unexpected companions fortifying a fan-favourite relationship outside of Mitsumi and Shima. And referencing said other companion, Mako becomes one of Mitsumi and Yuzuki's close friends, regardless of initially being adjacent to the loner archetype, where she felt difficulty in connecting with people and was presumptuous of others' personalities. Her rudimental intuitions of Yuzuki and Shima, both fitting the good-looking, popular classmate impression, was restrictive towards her social skills. Through the principle of judging one's personality through appearance, Mako's negative perception could have cost the close friendship she forms with Yuzuki later in the manga. It's through seeing Shima and Mitsumi's close bond, despite being an unconventional pairing, that gives her the push needed in leaving her comfort zone, to approach the likes of Yuzuki and rectify her unreasoned preconceptions through slowly opening herself up and giving her a chance. As of this, you see a growth in her person, situating herself within the girls' group naturally, and becoming open to the individualities her friends bring. Mako demonstrates the insecurities of approaching those more popular than yourself, but showcases the rewards in a way of substantiating her previous assuming nature. Her relationship with Yuzuki is elevated as of this change, becoming a continual pairing teetering towards a potential progression further than friendship. Or that might just be me manifesting. But even if that's not the case, and continues as a strong friendship, their relationship benefits from Skip and Lofa's themes and elevates the story through a female dynamic quite different to what I've read before. Opposing Yuzuki and Mako's introduction to the story, and their ease in becoming friends with Mitsumi, Mika's deep-rooted faux superiority complex set an emotional barrier difficult to break through. Mika's ideologies are reckoned from a neglected and bullied childhood. The story doesn't befall on glorifying Mika's problematic behaviour. She disguises her insecurities with an imitated pride, belittling those like Mitsumi who she initially deems beneath her. But insecurities arising when confronted with conventionally beautiful people like Yuzuki. She completely ignores Mitsumi from the start, dismissing the offer to swap contact details. That is, until she learns of Mitsumi's unforeseen chemistry and friendship with Shima, to which she gladly agrees to falsely befriend her. 
Mika is a complex character who, if written within another story, would have been a character I'd lack care for. However, I love Takamatsu's approach in showing a multifaceted teenager suffering from the ideals and pressures of society's rules on appearances. She pushed herself to lose weight, learn about makeup, and study fashion as a means of fitting in, and as revenge for the bullying she suffered. Mika beautifies herself in the hopes of being loved, of feeling worthy and someone deserving of affection. Clarifying her persistence in finding a boyfriend, particularly with Shima, was for the purpose of being recognised as someone. Rather than these changes boosting her confidence, they created a false sense of security. She shows a clear understanding of fashion sense, and a skill in dressing presentably. Except, when faced with Yuzuki, a girl who is naturally beautiful and didn't have to gruel in the efforts Mika did in looking conventionally attractive, Mika willows in self-pity and a lack of self-confidence. Ultimately, it's an empathetic narrative. She deems having a boyfriend as the ultimatum, because she never confided in building self-esteem for herself, but for how others value her. And it's this misunderstanding that causes her toxic behaviour, of which she is completely self-aware of. It's this vanity that spawns her jealousy of Mitsumi, a girl contradictory to her past due to being inconceivably herself, but still having friends. Mitsumi is the girl Mika could have been. Whilst Mika aged with disdain for others and a growing inferiority complex, Mitsumi had the love and support from friends leading to a caring nature. And this is something Mitsumi acknowledges and learns. It's why she continues to befriend Mika, even to Mika's own confusion, because she understands the efforts she had to go through as a result of loneliness and rejection. This understanding is perhaps the first acknowledgement Mika had ever received. Even if not to the affectionate standard she's looking for, Mitsumi confides in her despite knowing her awful traits, and it's this lack of judgement and hostility that changes how Mika perceives Mitsumi. Skip and Lofa showcases the tiny steps needed in building confidence, and how the existence of surrounding yourself with people who accept you in spite of your bad habits is vital towards progression. During the beginning of the video, I spoke with content regarding toxicity within romance manga. This isn't just applicable towards romantic couples, but the relationships between a parent slash guardian and child, of which shows a pattern towards derogatory, abusive, or neglectful scenarios. A highlight within Skip and Lofa is the dynamic between Mitsumi and her aunt now, a relationship provided with bittersweet ounces of familial love and respect in its utmost clarity. In extension, the story explores Nao's identity as a trans woman, not through being the victim of transphobic jokes, nor making her identity the biggest characteristic, just naturally showing an aunt caring for her niece, and being integral in salvaging Mitsumi's fashion choices. A quintessential trusting relationship splattered with mundane family activities adorable to witness. It's refreshing to see a guardian figure be so understanding and helpful in regards to schoolwork and life advice taking every opportunity to help when asked, and being overjoyed in seeing the friends Mitsumi has made, even using her own experiences in life to help out Mitsumi's friend Mika, who, as already addressed, faces intense lack of self-worth. Every scene between Mitsumi and Nao is heartfelt and contagiously uplifting, the epitome of a cherished familiar love so endearingly substantial to Mitsumi's positive upbringing. The heart now brings to the story connects the final pieces in portraying a refreshing parental-esque bond, pretty obscure, within romance manga. Ultimately, what drew me to Skip and Lofa, minus the adorableness of Mitsumi and Shima's relationship, was its depiction of friendships, romantic endeavours, presenting realistic teenage anxieties, and reiterating life lessons seldom communicated. The story implores upon the strength and importance of support systems, to befriend those who stick through thick and thin whilst fortifying one's emotions whether happy or disappointed, as well as lessons in being kind to yourself and keeping your integrity no matter the outcomes. Anxiety and worry of failure can feel obscure when surrounding yourself in an environment where the results of failure will not change the perception of your worth. Mitsumi started her journey within Tokyo with a focused drive pursued by smaller worries of uncertainty and apprehension. However, it's the compassion of those she befriends, between Shima's kind gestures, the girls' support, and the positive change she invokes in others, that will instead encapture Tokyo with happy memories she'll remember fondly. 
Skip and Loafer takes advantage of the conventional tropes established from school romance manga, and defines it through nuances in character behaviour that is more grounded and positive in nature. It's a story that hooked me in through the aberration of Mitsumi's personality, but anchored my interests consequent to the themes of influence through integrity and compassion. Let's go!